Awesome. Hey. Hey. Uh, welcome to week two of the painter and the performance artist. I'm Ida Sophia. And I'm Ruby Chu. And we're here at the Mill Adelaide. Um, and we are really excited to share with you our thoughts and experiences from last week. And at the end, you've got to stay tuned. We're going to reveal our second challenge to each other. Um, so yeah, do you want to do you want to start off talking about your experience from last week? Sure. So my um, provocation or challenge from Ida was uh, revolving around endurance because um, Ida's practice as a performance artist involves endurance based work. So I was requested to observe an object for 25 minutes in silence and then use that observation as a starting point to make work. So that was a bit daunting for me, the idea of um, sitting in silence and watching something for 25 minutes, but it actually went really fast. Um, I allowed myself to write notes as I was observing and honestly a lot of thoughts came to me that I don't think I would have thought of just looking at something at a glance and a lot of kind of narrative based thoughts came to me the first was um, the power of breath so really being conscious of breathing and being present in the moment while I observed my object which was the material of paper so I had paper scrunched and ripped and that kind of thing in front of me as I yeah, I guess became really present in the moment through breathing. So I made some um, work based on that concept of breath. Um, so I scrunched some paper up and noticed that as it expanded, it reminded me of my chest expanding as I was breathing. So I filmed that and made a video work called Paper Breath. Is it your first video work? Yeah, it oh, is. So <laughs> as a painter, this is really different for me. So. Um, <laughs> That one's on my Instagram and it's also being projected here at the mill. And then I also made some, I guess an installation that was uh, based on paper breath, scrunched up paper, pinned to the wall. And my other thought was about the limitations of paper. So the fact that it cannot be um, stretched. Yeah, stretched or pulled. Yeah. And I had this strange vision of um, a tug of tug of war t with rope that was mm -hmm. made out of paper. And when people pulled, it became this like string cheese kind of goo, which obviously I've been pulling at paper and it's just been going snap. Mm. Um, so I made some an installation with some uh, very finely cut paper that drooped, kind of like expressing that vision of of the string cheese paperness. Mm, mm. Um, so cool. Yeah, it's been it's been really good. And this is just from three days. Like we didn't get a whole week to explore um, this first challenge together. So I think that that's actually, you know, that's a lot of experimentation to, to smoosh into three days. I guess, yeah, there's a lot of thinking as well. It's not yeah. like we can just use the whole time to make. We really mm. have to contemplate. <laughs> Tell me about your experience. Yeah, so, uh, well, what I was really happy with was that I was uncomfortable. Um, I think you felt that too, yes. you know? <laughs> and that's really, uh, going back to our manifesto, this is what we want in this time, to be uncomfortable, to be really challenged, and I was. Um, so Ruby's challenge to me, and I'm just going to paraphrase, um, was that I needed to explore the picture, picture plane, which for Ruby is uh, the canvas, but for me is my body. And then to, um, understand how I can acknowledge the picture plane and use that as a window into another reality. So, um, in Ruby's practice, that's painting something like very, very realistic and, um, acknowledging the picture playing canvas by putting like a button or flat flatness and there's this amazing push pull that occurs there and she was asking me how I can do that for my practice so it was a really big concept for me to just get my head around there's a lot of talking I think a lot of we discussion. did a lot of talking but that yeah. was amazing like because I've, I've always understood my body as a canvas and time uh as the as like the paint if you like mm -hmm. um so I did a lot of experiments uh, making textures on my on my skin and I wanted and, and a lot of chatting with Ruby and a lot of um, looking looking to where where is the dialogue between my skin and then something else that is realistic and how can 
the eye fluctuate between understanding what they see as skin and this realistic the illusion, I guess. illusion, right? Yeah. So where I got to very naturally was um, looking at landforms. So things like um, desert dunes and water and um, ice cracks and things like that. So what I made was some uh, paper and glue textures, um, and I used I used the glue to make them really really. Um, strong so so not malleable after after they've been created in the form of um, paper dunes and then I laid on those uh, laid my back on those textures to imprint that onto the big sort of biggest canvas that I have which is my back and then um, and then I, I did this in the gallery space of the mill and then uh, exhibited the that print then um, being uh, extracted or taken away from my body just by the, the natural healing uh, process that, that it goes through. And it was really, it was a really beautiful um, time-based um, process. It made me think a lot about, <coughs> sorry, it made me think a lot about the way that the earth um, takes on trauma, takes on texture, and, uh, and and can change it in, it in its way as well. I'm not articulating myself very well this morning. No, you're doing well. I think um, it's been really interesting to observe this mm -hmm. because um, this has been a backbone of my practice for a long time is the push-pull of the picture plane mm. and its power to be a window into another world through realism and then mm. acknowledging its objectness, its mm. surface, its mm. the fact that you can touch and hold it and hang it on a wall. So seeing you... Um, interpret that into your own practice has been really interesting has mm. made me think about my practice in a different mm. way as well so, so it's been really cool yeah <laughs> yeah it's a it, it's an amazing this this way of um being in the studio with someone who is so different to you but that you trust i i it, it's been so uh expansive and illuminating so far in that uncomfortable uncomfortability there's been so many thoughts that i wouldn't have had if I was, you know, at home in my own studio. Yeah, I agree. Which is really cool. And um, I think we both wanted a bit more time with this one, but. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately now, well, I mean, fortunately, now we are moving on to the next provocation or challenge. Um, so as you probably know, we have um, one provocation each week that we have written for each other based on our own practices. So when I was writing, this to me was like writing to myself and now I'm just kind of passing that on to Ida um, to see what she makes of it. Is yeah. I'm gonna read it now? I think so. Yeah, yeah, okay. Challenge number two. All right. Ooh. <laughs> Macro, micro. Create a five by five centimeter paper viewfinder. Spend time looking through this, observing your object of significance within the gallery. From this, sketch quick cropped compositions, cover your object. Select the successful compositions and scale these up to 100 by 100 centimeters using paper as a support. Working in a process-based manner, render these from memory. Invent the information you cannot recall. Respond to each move as you make it. Ooh, move. So I do get to make some new moves. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, cool. We're not going to discuss them because that's for the week. Yes. You just got to stay tuned. Okay. On breath. Draw the breath into your body. Make on the exhale only. AM. So in the morning. Then... Make only when you ex uh, sorry, make only when you inhale, make decisions for your next move on the exhale PM. Okay, I need to I need to process this. <laughs> but it's nice that you you know you were working with the breath last week, so I feel like this was a, a well timed yeah, publication for absolutely. You to have this week. And just for your information, we wrote these prior to entering the gallery and starting the show. Mm -hmm. So it is quite amazing <laughs> that Ida has written something on breath, considering that 
a lot of my work from last week was on breath. So I love it. here I we love go. It. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, it was really lovely to share this with you this morning. Um, please come into the mill. We're here 10 to 4 all week. Um, we love having studio visits, inviting you into our process in the real, um, and showing you previous work, um, future work, and witnessing uh, the things that we're doing. So, yeah. Absolutely. And also just a reminder that our finissage event is on May 7 from 5.30 here in the gallery. And that is going to be, I guess it's kind of like the opening. Yeah. It's really the closing event because you get to see what we've produced during this month um, and it will be exhibited. Yeah, for two weeks after the finissage. So um, pop it in your diaries and we'll see you soon. Ciao. Bye.